with HMB Outdoors. Today we're going to do another review on our Mako Pro Skip. It's going to be kind of an update video. I know last time was a little bit windy. So we got some wind out here today again. But last time I kind of went over some things pretty quick. Man, I left some things out. And I didn't have my cameraman last time. So I was doing a lot of things for myself, which kind of made the video a little hard to watch. So today I'm going to do an updated video and kind of show you some more stuff. Maybe go over some stuff I didn't go over last time or a little bit more self-explanatory. Stick around. All right, guys, let's start at the front of the boat. You remember last time I told you, come here and let's show them. With this front end, what you've got is like a mini cap. So you have a little air channel down there that will help take the air and bypass it past the engine so you don't get no cavitation, okay? It's a skiff front end, nice and flat, uh, good for casting up on the deck, plenty of room for guys up there to go fishing on. Nice rub rail, okay? It's your basic basic galvanized trailer okay as long as you don't scratch your dooney uh dings to it or mess it up you know it'll last you quite a while uh, come down you know, some of you guys last time i was telling you about the problem i had with the front aerator and i didn't want to mention the name of the place where i bought it but since then we've kind of made up i've called them they're going to make some things right so we're all good to go so give a shout out to waypoint marine for hooking me up and uh fixing stuff that was wrong got your plastic fenders here they're pretty stout. I'm a big old boy. I'm right about 270 pounds. I step on them. They don't have any give. So they're, they're plenty strong enough for you. Your basic galvanized wheels. Okay. Standard trailer tires. Got your typical cleats they put on. These I put on myself. These were extras. Before this, all it was was just a trailer, which kind of made it a little bit difficult to put it on the trailer itself. You can hear it right the first time. All this is, I got it from Bass Pro. Okay. It's just a little attachment you put on there, you bolt them on, you slide some PVC over the top. That way if the boat hits it, it can, I say that, it can roll if it's a little loose. If not, it just hits this, doesn't scuff the boat, helps keep it on the trailer, makes life a ton simpler, okay? I want to kind of go over this motor real quick. Oh, let me cut the battery off. Kind of go over the motor quick. If you watched the last video, you saw me talk about uh, how I need to change the oil. I just changed it yesterday, so we're good on that. So, 60 horse EFI, I can tell you right now, this is probably the perfect size motor for this boat. Yeah, you can go bigger, but with the fuel economy, the way it pushes you, I can put me and three other people in here, it still pushes right at almost 30 miles an hour. I hardly ever run full speed, usually three quarter speed. Saves the engine life, there's no reason to just gun it every time you go, okay? But I have, and when you do, it'll do it. So, in my engines, I told you last time, I used the Boeing, the, the bow shield, okay? It's a T7. Spray the whole engine, it'll keep it looking like new for the whole time you have it, okay? Stops all the corrosion, all the rust, works great on the motors. And you can see right here where I just changed uh, the hours, 22.2, when we come around the air side, I'll show you. Okay. Again, everything looks great, nice, and you know, Mercury does an outstanding job with their motors. I love Mercury motors. Was the tilt trim motor. Okay, something I wish that companies would do a little bit better. Is you tilt your tilt trim motor right here. What I wish they would do is I wish they would coat it just a little bit better. So what I do right here, I spray some LPS3 or some Corrosion X HD. You coat it on there real heavy and it makes it real waxy. Uh, it sticks to it, makes it real waxy base, okay? And it will not come off, okay? You can't just take and rub that stuff off, okay? You have to spray it off. Some kind of a degreaser or mineral spirits stays on there real thick, allows the salt water just to wash right over it. Doesn't allow anything to rust. That's one of the tricks you guys need to do for this boat and it will help you out tremendously, okay? Let's walk over here. Kind of touch up on some of the stuff I talked about last time. I talked to you about the steering tube, okay? You got this plastic nut right here, it's a cap, okay? You take that cap off, there's actually an O ring inside here. And probably twice a year, just from my experience, you want to replace an O ring, it's cheap, you can buy a whole pack, it'll probably last the entire life of the engine. That O ring is what helps keep the grease inside your steering tube, which allows your worm gear to 
to go back and forth easy, which makes your steering great. I know it sounds like a lot, but I'm sure you understand what I mean. So when you pump grease here, that grease right here will actually spread to the hinges for this motor to come up and down, okay? It doesn't really pump in your steering tube. This is something you have to do yourself. Open this up. When you open this up, you can slide that side out, pack it full of grease, put it back in, put that back on, you're good to go, okay? Some little small things here and there, take the nut off. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you'll get it. It's very simple. Okay. Back around the back of the boat, to put a handle here. Uh, pretty good hard plastic step. Uh, I've never used it. I don't get out and weight fish. Uh, if we ever want to pull the kids or something with the boat, we can. Yes, a 60 horse will do it. So come around this side. Same thing on this side. Oh, and the lights. Uh, they're, they're basic trader lights. When they go out, which they always do, I'm probably going to want to replace them with some LEDs. Same thing on this side, all the way down. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and get inside the boat and uh, show you some stuff last time that I really couldn't uh, touch up on because I said I, only had, I didn't have a cameraman. So I'm going to kind of get in there, open some stuff up, show you what I'm talking about. Okay, guys, we'll start up here with the front compartment. This front compartment's pretty basic. You can kind of shine down there and show them. It's a pretty basic compartment. It's not a dry box at all. Uh, first aid kit here, some other stuff that doesn't hurt if it gets wet. It's got a drain in here, so anything that gets in this compartment will drain. Actually drains down to the bottom of the boat, so it doesn't get on your deck and uh, just rolls out the back. Okay, the second compartment here. Now this compartment right here, last time I said dry box, it's probably, I'd say, 95% dry box, okay? Reason being, is they have a rubber seal that goes all the way around it. Once you got this down and locked, water will hit the rubber, run around, and not get in here. Now, your other models, your earlier models didn't do that. But I believe this is a, an addition they put on, something they started doing recently, um, and it really helps out a lot. I put a lot of stuff in here, you know, our wallets, phones, stuff like that. Uh, Everything stays nice and dry. Your lights that plug in, that come around here, mount them, show them. Your lights stay right here, okay? This is your front light, real simple. You just pop this out, plug it in the front. It's a plug and play uh, fixture, works real great. Uh, I put some, in mine, I put some rubber, some rubber mats, so it kind of softens the blow and quiets things down when we're running. And when I put something in there, I don't have to worry about nothing banging and uh, getting messed up. But this is, uh, water has gotten in here, but it takes me spraying the boat down right on the seal for water to get in there. For the most part, this is a dry box. You can count on putting something in here and keeping it dry when you're fishing for sure. I've even been out in the rain and nothing gets in here. But when you start washing it off and spraying it, it can hit those rubber seals if you get too close and it can bypass those seals and water gets in there. But it too has a drain, so anything that gets in here will drain out. Nothing stays. Good, good hinges. Strong, strong hinges. Uh, it work real good. I mean, you let it go, okay, it doesn't shoot it up real hard against any of the hinges. Works real good, okay? Rubber stops when it comes down so it ain't slamming, gouging anything up. Now, this is what I want to talk about, the main thing I wanted to talk about. This was a live well, okay? When I got this live well, it wasn't working properly. Okay, it would pump water in, no problem, but it wouldn't drain. Reason being is because come from the factory, when they put all the tubes together at the T where the drain and the overflow run together, the sealant was too thick, and when they put it together, the sealant plugged up the hole, okay? Plugged up the hose, it wouldn't drain. Now, when I bought it, they said they tested everything out, and it worked just fine. You know, at first I was a little upset, but hey, it happens. Somebody probably got in a hurry. They overlooked it. It's not a big deal. I was never going to use this as, as a live well anyway. Uh, I had a Mako 18 LTS before this. I never used that as a live well, ever. Uh, I did, however, like to use it and drain. It was insulated, so I would fill that with ice and water and make a slurry. I would put all my fish in there, okay? Unfortunately, I can't do that now, but that's okay. So what I did was I drilled holes in the bottom, and we'll throw our shoes in there, stuff like that, stuff that... Don't mind if it gets wet for a minute, because if water does come in here, with the holes I drilled, 
it just comes back on the deck and right out the back, okay? Nothing stays. So it, it, it worked out pretty good, okay? Um, but you know, when you, you pay for a live well, you expect a live well to work. But we're past that, we're all good now, okay? And so it's, when I said dry box last time, uh, it's got a little rubber seal here, but it's not a true dry box, okay? What I meant was, if any water gets in there, it will drain pretty quickly, okay? Something else you might want to know if you buy this boat, your bait wells. You have this little piece right here where the water comes out, how you fill it up while you're running, okay? When you're going from spot to spot, close that all the way up, because if you don't, it will spray in here, okay? The suction will come up through the hose and it will spray in here. We were getting water here, we could never figure out why, that was why, okay? Brain dead moment, I didn't catch it. So, that's that. Rod holders. Rod holders are good. I like the positioning of them. They hold the rods good. However, this is good thick plastic, like I said before, but these screws don't cover very well, okay? They'll hold the rods just fine when you're driving down the road or you're running the fishing spot. But if you put your uh, your net in here, your big net, all that tension will pull on these rod holders and it'll actually strip those screws out. Okay, that's kind of a kind of a minus, but it doesn't hurt me because it doesn't affect the rods at all. Only with the big net. Well, problem big big nets in the back. Okay, come around to the other side. We'll get the other side in a minute. Now let's get around here to the back of the console. This is the part I think I like the most about this boat. There's not a whole lot of electronics, guys. Very very simple. Okay, you got your main stuff here. You know your power. You run your bilge pumps. You, can, you know, let's see the horn on. Oh, I guess you can get it. Okay. Quiver. You got your main shut off, you got a main breaker, and very few buttons, okay? I don't like a whole lot of electronics in my boat for the main reason that the more electronics there are, the more things can go wrong, okay? And nowadays with the stuff they sell, if my lights go out, or I'm sorry, if my, if my wiring gets bad or whatever, and I can't run my lights, they sell all kind of a quick attachments you can put on the front, front and rear, and you're good to go, okay? I like having my tachometer, my RPM gauge, that's good, okay, that's the only thing I got, I don't have a speedometer or anything, I just go, I got my GPS on my phone that works pretty accurately, uh, RPM gauge, I did put a little, uh, I'm not a little Garmin, a depth finder, slash fish finder, whatever, but it also uh, works off the GPS, works with your speed as well, uh, I use it every now and then, only because I know where I'm going all the time, I pretty much go to the same spot, so it's not a big deal, this goes straight to the battery, Never had an issue with it. Cap it off when I'm not using it. I actually spray some of that LPS uh, up in here as well. Or Corrosion X. Not HD, but Corrosion X. Uh, you spray Corrosion X up under here, or even that T7 that I spray on the motor. Get up under here and spray it on all your wires and all your boards your wires connect to. And never have any rust or corrosion. Yeah, and that plays a lot, guys. That's this is stuff that always gives people problems, you know, down the road. Everything gets corroded, you can't work on it, you wind up having to cut, replace all the wires. It can take forever. Back here, again, we talked about it last time. Okay, got the mount for the cooler. I don't remember how many quarts this is, but this comes with the boat. Got the nice Mako cushion on it, the colors and the style. Got the shark right here that's, that's uh, sewed into backrest looks cool gives a good look okay you flip back and forth in case you want to sit back that way and do some fishing when you're running these rod holders right here i put it myself got them from bass pro okay little lifesavers when i fish by myself i'll roll this back sit back put the rods out that way okay uh, bait well back here now this bait well i actually do use and i'll tell you what i use it for it's bigger it's bigger than what you see on camera because when it goes down inside the boat it actually flares out and comes down we're having a bad day of fishing and catching a whole lot i'll fill this up have the aerator running put a couple ones in there if we're not catching anything i'll just let them go okay i won't stress them out put them on a stringer or nothing like that when we're usually catching good fish what i do is i fill this up with ice water about halfway and the rest with, uh, half with ice the other half with water make a good slush put the Put the fish in here, you can go three, four days without cleaning as long as it's staying that good slushy water. Just a little tent. Keep that full of ice and a very slushy ice water and the fish will stay in there for a long time, I promise you. Other rod holder, close my net. That's a simple fix, keeping it out of those rod holders. Don't blow out here, it's real tight. Okay, all your steering cables, 
all your fuel fuel lines come up through here. You know, Mako did a real good job of mounting that up so everything stays out of the way. You got a little access right here. You can turn, pull out. You can access your aerators or anything like that or something stopping up the drain. What should happen is do a lot of cast out in the boat and get grass or something in there or trash. Um, the other spot for your light, your plug-in light. Thing. Just where your light plugs in, what I showed you in the front. You just plug in, it's good to go. It's a plug and play. Okay? Back to this pole. This pole I got from Granger, okay? It's 10 feet long. It's got a tensile strength, tensile breaking strength of 100,000 pounds. So there's not a boat out there I know of, bay boat, that'll break this rod, okay? This is the same exact rod that they use in power poles, only bigger. Okay, this is one inch. Most power poles, half, uh, five eighths, stuff like that. They're just, they're not this size, okay? And that's what they use in them big boats. This works great, okay? It's a poor man's power pole. This side of the console, basic console again. Gear shifter here, you got tilt trim right here, okay? I have it off. Tilt trim right here, makes life simple. Now some guys, I'm gonna tell you this, they don't know this. When you're starting your motor at home, if you use the earmuff style and you wanna run it that way, which I like doing, I like the flush, the easy flush, but I'm old school, I kinda like putting the muffs on it, make sure my water pump's still running. When you start the engine, make sure you're in neutral, push this button in, just like that, and go forward, and what it does, it's nothing but throttle, it's not engaging uh, to drive, okay? Again, you have to push that button in, go forward, it's nothing but throttle, that's all it is, just throttle, okay? Here last time they give you a little, a little, uh, I don't wanna say a cup holder, it's like a little notch here, throw your fish grabbers in there, you know, we got a little live shrimp net right here, uh, sheath for a knife, um, you probably saw on the other side, I got some little fish tape in here just to kind of reference some fish sizes. And yeah, that's about it, guys. I'll uh, get down there and we'll wrap this up. All right, guys. Again, with this Mako skiff, okay, it's all about you. It's all about your, your price range, uh, what you're looking for in a boat. This boat cost me, I want to say it was around 21000 total, which... Uh, in, in the world of bay fishing boats, is like dirt cheap, okay? I know some people can't afford it. Trust me, I get it. This is my first new boat. I bought a lot of used boats in my lifetime and made them work, okay? I've taken river boats and fished in the bay. I've done all kinds of stuff. But finally going out and getting this boat, and the reason I got this boat is before this one, I had a Mako 18 LTS that I bought used. I had it for about five years. Uh, only got rid of it because we started hunting a lot, and we just wasn't putting the old girl in the water. And the worst thing for a boat is just to sit. Okay, anybody that's a boat owner knows what I'm talking about. We got real wrapped up in hunting. We was always at the lease and the old poor girl was just sitting out there not doing anything. And I had in mind anyway of buying a new one. So uh, it was gonna work out, you know, work out like we needed it to. Uh, this boat right here, again, with the 60 horse motor on it, to me, I think it's the perfect size motor for this boat. You can get them bigger. They have a 75 horse package, uh, a 90. If I'm correct, I think they even put 115s on it now. To me, that's too fast. I mean, you can go as fast as you want to on a boat, but there are no brakes on a boat. I've said it before, I'll say it a million times, okay? This is perfect. Now, 30 miles an hour, I'm only running maybe a mile out. This, this works perfect for me. Uh, you can get in a one-person boat, two-person boat. I've had four people here and we all fish comfortably, okay? I highly recommend these Mako boats. They do a great job. I love the fact, you know, it's all composite. It's gonna last a long, long time. I could pass this down to my son if I wanted to. Um, so that's the reason I choose these boats, okay? Um, it's all on what you like. But if you are in the South Texas area, you know, I would go to Waypoint Marine. Uh, don't worry about that little mishap. It's something that happens, okay? No matter what you do, nobody's perfect. Things happen. Uh, but they've made it right. They're going to fix some stuff for me. Um, I think they're going to give my first tune-up for free. So that's going to work out just great. So again, guys, appreciate it. All right, guys, one thing I did fail to mention or talk about with the uh, gas tanks. I talked about that last time, okay? It comes with one standard six gallon tank. Uh, for the most part, that does me pretty good, but that only allows me to go to my furthest spot and back, and that's it, okay? No joy riding, no messing around. Easy fix, got another six gallon put on the other side. I seen some guys that went ahead and bought the whole 12 gallon. Uh, I like the six gallons. It's just a little bit of a diversity for me. You know, I don't need all 12 gallons. I don't like keeping a lot of fuel in the tank to get moisture. Uh, 
in that tank, you know, you have issues down the road. So I like the two to six gallon. It also puts a better balance on the boat, okay? Now these boats aren't very heavy, they're not very big, so uh, you overload one side a little bit, you'll notice it when you're when you're driving. And as old, old as CD as I am, I like to have my boat level. So that's pretty much it, guys. I'm hoping this video was a little bit better. I hope the wind wasn't as bad we are in South Texas. I can't help the wind. I've got mics with uh, wind adapters and it just doesn't seem to do any good because it's always too windy here. Um, hopefully tomorrow we get to get out on some water and catch some fish, maybe do a catch, clean, and cook. Uh, if the weather holds up, looks like we may have more rain coming. We've been slammed for the past week, and uh, everything's pretty much flooded down here. So again, guys, I hope you appreciate it. You know, like and subscribe, help us out. We can keep this going. And something I'm going to tell you every time we talk, if you can, get out there and wet a line, let an arrow fly, or put some rounds down range, guys. This is Tyron with HAB Outdoors. We'll see you next time.